Well, hello everybody. This is Phil Kerner once again, continuing on with uh, some shop math, trigonometry, ball dimensions. It's all taking off in one big direction here. So uh, let's take a look at this little drawing I made here. And uh, I'm doing enough of these now where I made a template up. So at least when I draw, I don't have to do the uh, border and the name uh, uh, nameplate down here. Um, so what we have here is something that you would typically see in a shop. Uh, I've got three holes here. And uh, not sure why they do this, but this is how they do it. And you'll get a drawing like this eventually. So let's look at this. Uh, we've got a six-inch plasma cut plate. All right? Half-inch thick. Four-inch BC. That's typically what you'll see. BC. Bolt circle. That's the diameter of it. And then... Half inch ream, drilled ream through, spaced as shown. Spaced as shown. 35 degrees, 13 degrees, and 20 degrees. Well, you know, unless you have a CNC machine, uh, the rest of us on a bridge port or a manual machine, we've got to know how far to crank uh, over on the X and the Y to drill these holes. All right, so some basic trig today. So first thing I do when I have a problem like this to this day is I color in my triangles. Now, I've done a little more here. Uh, for you for, because this is a lesson uh, so here's the triangles we're trying to solve a b and c and uh, these this is the leg we need to know i've left all the dimensions blank and how we're going to solve those problems so some of you i assume know this but uh, don't shoot me i'm just the messenger here uh, a basic right angle a right, right angle triangle all right um I don't think we're going to get into any oblique triangle lessons here. I've run into them so few times over the years. Almost everything we're going to do for shop trig is going to have a right angle. That's right here. It's a 90 degree angle. All right. Not 91, not 89, 90. Three sides to a triangle. Here's the way I always remember it. So we've got an angle here. Let's just call it 15 degrees, 10 degrees, whatever. So you get two lines, two arrowheads touching that. So, the way I always remember, number one, the hypotenuse is always the longest side. That's along the angle. That's easy. Your side adjacent is the side where one of the arrows is touching that is straight. Okay? And then it makes it even easier. The opposite, the side opposite, all right, is opposite of the of these two angles, of these two arrowheads. That makes sense, right? If we start here and we know that angle, the opposite side, that's opposite. Easy way to remember it. So, moving on to the next slide. This is really important. All right. I'm going to put a, uh, I've already uploaded this chart uh, to the tool and die guy. You can have it. Uh, just right click on it, download the PDF. The link is going to be under this lesson. All right. But what we have here is, uh, let's make a move. Okay. Basic trig functions. Now, let me go back to this triangle just, just for a second here. All right, to solve a triangle, you need to know two things, all right? If you need to know the angle, you've got to know both sides. If you want to know one of the sides, you need to know the angle and the other side. All of this can be solved, but you always have to have two pieces of information, all right? So back down to here we go. So in this case, let's solve for triangle A. Let's just make this clear which one that is. A is this 13-degree triangle at the top, right? Now, forgive, I just did this in Publisher, so this isn't done in AutoCAD. So, we need the X dimension to move over on our machine, and we need the Y. Well, what do we know here? Well, I said we need to know two things, so we do know two things. We know the 13-degree angle, all right? And that could be, doesn't matter, 13.25 degrees, whatever, but in this case, I made it 13 and then we also know the hypotenuse, the longest side. It's two inches. And why do we know it's two inches? Because it's a four-inch bolt circle, and half of that is two inches. Easy peasy, right? So let's solve for X. I usually go with this, uh, uh, the sine or the tangent function on this one. Uh, these are just inverts of, of those. So th this is easy, just the sine. You can all look this up in your car lane book, or I'll show you how to do it again with a scientific calculator later but in this case i'm going to use hypotenuse times sine 
2 inches times a sine of 13 degrees. So there it is, spelled out 2 inches times a sine of 13 degrees, which is 0.22495 equals 0.4499. Now we know how much to move over on our x from the center line of our part to drill our hole, drill and ream it. And then to solve for y, again, we do know two things, the hypotenuse and the angle. So now we're just going to take the hypotenuse times the cosine. 2 inches times the cosine of 13 degrees, which is 0.97437 equals 1 inch, 948 thousandths and 7 tenths. So now we've solved that triangle. Now, back in the day, uh, I would just make a quick hand sketch like that. So um, this is for triangle B, and I even wrote on here, here's your 20 degree angle, here's your opposite side, your adjacent, and just use those same formulas that I just showed you. Sorry for the scratch out here. I meant to put that there. I didn't feel like redrawing it. Again, this would be something I'd probably throw out after the job, or sometimes I would save my math in case somebody came back and said I was wrong, but uh, made a mistake. So these are the B and C triangles using the same formulas that we did for uh, used to solve triangle A. I use the same ones, except using the, the sine and cosine of 35 and 20. All right, so that's it. So you got a couple choices here back to our handy dandy ancient car lane book and i did not rescan that page in for these angles but again you would just find the page that says 13 degrees or 20 or 35 and there's your sign your cosine your tangents and um, these are simply inversions of those and what do i mean by that i did this on purpose inverse functions the inverse of a sign is the cosecant the inverse of the cosine is the secant and the inverse of the tangent is the cotangent. All right, so that's those. That's only what makes any sense. At least they use the same word. But um, that's how that works. All right. But that's why I usually stay away from the inverts. If I can just use uh, the sines and the cosines, the, the tangents, sines, cosines, co uh, and tangents. I don't. I don't like to use the inverse functions. All right. A little trickier on the calculator. So uh, back to the Carlane book. Now let's see here. What else do I have for you? All right, again, I made this a clean copy of this. It's uh, the link under here. We've got so much more to cover here. Uh, we are going to get into using our handy dandy TI 30XA solar powered uh, calculator to do some of this math, make it a little easier for you. Probably already doing that. Good investment, pretty cheap. Uh, and that's it from here. So, again, I'm Phil Kerner, the Tool and Die Guy. Lots more to cover on this. I'm excited to do it. And, uh, for more like this, uh, of course, there's 450 videos at thetoolanddieguy.com. Big library over there. So we'll see you on the next math class. If you have any questions, just please post them underneath.